Good morning, people. It's me, Guy, you know, California Times guy. Just wanted to say hello. It's morning. I'm off to my my day job. I've got a day job. And uh, it's a great job, except um, I would really like to be locked in to be doing this job. And I, I know I need to be doing a better job. And this is what I'm doing today, getting up this early in the morning. Uh, I need subscribers and I need some comments. And today I'm going to talk just briefly, touch base a little bit on the recall and uh, more or less giving you a little background. I see lots of letters to the editors uh, here and there um, in, in support of Governor Newsom and saying what a travesty it is to have this recall and that we should let ourselves go back to just the legal way of doing it, which is in 2022. As a matter of fact, in a previous talk, I called the 2022 the phony election and the recall the real election. Well, I stand by that, and I believe that to be the case, really. Um, this recall election has got 55 different candidates, or is it, I'm sorry, maybe it's 45. The number seems to have decreased, but uh, there are numerous candidates, some of them ordinary people, some of them, uh, nobody's ordinary in this world. And when they get, if indeed enough people are dissatisfied with the direction of California and Governor Newsom's leadership, um, someone else will be the governor and it'll only be for a year until the next election. But I'm gonna read the words of Ralph Nader uh, describing what took place in 2010 when we looked to this real election and what we did to democracy in California back in 2010 and how we're still suffering from that. And we are actually being taken for a ride even further and further away from real democracy. So I'm gonna read the words of Ralph Nader. This was pulled from the internet and I don't know uh, where, but uh, it was a piece that he wrote. He entitled it, California Enshrines the Duopoly. Last month, big business interests shamelessly dealt in our already depleted democracy, a devastating blow by misleading California voters into approving Proposition 14 without their opponents being able to reach the people with rebuttals. This voter initiative provides that the number, November elections in that state for members of Congress and state elective offices are reserved only for the top two vote garnering candidates in the June primary. This is the status of things in California since 2010. There are no longer any party primaries per se, only one open primary. Voters can vote for any candidate on the ballot for any office. Presidential candidates are still under the old system. At least that. Since the two major parties are the wealthiest and have the power of incumbency and favored rules, the top two, as this D form, is called, Nader puts the deform in quotes, it's his own choice of words instead of reform, is called, will either be a Republican or Democrat. In gerrymandered districts, two Republicans or two Democrats. I think uh, Nader didn't realize where California was going there. Goodbye to voter choices for smaller third party and independent candidates on the ballot in November who otherwise would qualify with adequate petitions for the ballot. Goodbye to new ideas, different agendas, candidates and campaign practices. The two party tyranny is now entrenched in California to serve the barons of big business who outspent their opponents 20 to 1 for TV and radio ads 
and other can't even read my writing and other avenues, I guess, of to sell their to seal this voter incarceration by the two party duopoly. Proposition 14 decreed that even write in votes in November by contrarian citizens could no longer be counted. Final vote, 53.7% for, 463 against. In review, a couple of things here for Ralph Nader in 2010. Right now, uh, Republican uh, membership, uh, I have read, is down to 25% of all registered voters. It's not really quite a duopoly even anymore. It is a monopoly. The Democratic Party, who paints itself as a party of the people, is completely in the hands of the new corporate barons. Open primary, it was called. It was deceptive. It's really closed democracy. As Ralph Nader describes it, an incarceration of democracy, a deform. The, the duopoly is a monopoly. And now when you look at the uh, this mail-in trend or mandate, being pushed by the federal government as a democratic reform, one starts to see that it really is part of the entrenched interest to always make sure that voters do not hear multiple voices, will make their decisions based on their limited uh, approach their party loyalty that has been for many beaten into them by a fear a fear sometimes driven by driven by the office holders the members of the party the partisan politics and it could have been either left or right or republican or democrat but predominantly and now it's now it's democrat In an addendum, curiously, if the by mail voters were taken out of the equation, more vo voters who went to the polls on an election day voted against Proposition 14, 52% to 48%. Election day voters may have benefited from the fuller public discussion of Proposition 14, including its negation I uh, can't read my writing in other words you have a voting two month period when you get your party instructions of who to vote and of course, all my, so many of my friends know naturally who to vote. They don't have to even ask. Your late night comics will tell you, and your friends will tell you, and your wonderful party will tell you, and many young journalists who write stories that are editorials that don't seem to uh, penetrate to the deeper questions. You just wonder how, whatever happened to modern journalism. So right now, Newsom, I think it was 
just a month or two ago, he had $16.7 million in his war chest given to him by all the forces of uh, righteousness to rule California, uh, dwarfing, dwarfing by millions of dollars the total sum total of any of the other candidates, including the five Republicans or seven Republicans or whoever they are in their disorganized party. Why couldn't they have held a, a new convention? I don't know who's in charge of the Republican Party. We do need a new party in uh, California and in the planet, I think. Um, yeah, of those millions of dollars that Newsom has gotten, you can just look, run down the list, talk about corruption, talk about the reason why this recall even got started. The corruption in California is, is a threat to younger generations. It's a threat to those of us who are alive today. Um, it blinds us to the truth. No problems are being solved. You can go down the list of those giant million dollar donations and you can see who is trying to buy off Newsom. Who? California unions? Would that, that seems like that would be, is that proper? Uh, the internet, all the dot com businesses, what are they buying when they give him millions of dollars? The Resnick family down in Central Valley with their corrupt water practices, who else is in that list? I urge you all to vote yes on the recall of Governor Newsom and accept whatever candidate is in there for one year. I would hope that we get a proposition on the ballot, I would try to do something that would eliminate, go back to an open democracy instead of this baloney of the open primary. And I would ask everybody to think deeply about this process of voting a month before, or two months before, that always will, always will best serve conventional wisdom. It will always best serve those who are not the underdog. Voting two months before, I think, is a terrible practice, terrible practice. It's Civic-minded people should not do that, give into this at all. It's baloney. It's a fraud. What are we being taught? The whole federal uh, review control of elections across the country? You should all be deeply distrustful of that. Deeply distrustful. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. That's about it. <clears throat> and uh, thank you all. Thank any bold and brave souls to joining me to the end of this little monologue. I do appreciate your support. I need more subscribers. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to redouble my efforts, and uh, I wish they could have been more over the years, but uh, we all have to do whatever we can do. So thanks a bunch. And uh, yeah, I'll be talking to you soon. Later. Bye.